Obviously, text messaging, I think, is is coming into play a whole lot more, and it should be because it's, it's such a great opportunity um, to communicate with prospects. But I think I think people haven't figured that out yet. You know, they haven't quite figured out how to, to communicate with the customers where they're at necessarily, and they're still picking up the phone. What have you seen? So, you know, in the realm of these two conferences, especially if we're looking at call centers, what things haven't changed, right? What things are like just the way they are versus, you know, there's some areas that I could see accelerating and changing some areas where it's like, here's the, here's what works and here's what still works. And here's what's going to continue to work. Is there anything that comes to mind in that category? Well, I think what's what hasn't changed is, um, you know, we look at, we talk, especially in contact center space, we talk about omni-channel communication or multi-channel communication. Mm -hmm. um, and those are sort of like the buzzwords, right, of the last five years or so. Um, but people aren't implementing those, right? It's like, I don't think, I don't think people are actually implementing them. Like they're, you know, they're, they're finding the solutions, you know, the, the, the call center platforms that can do text, chat, you know, calls, um, you know, all those sorts of things, messenger, and they want those sh tools, but they're not, I don't think they're necessarily implementing them yet. Obviously text messaging, I think is is coming into play a whole lot more and it should be because it's, it's such a great opportunity um, to communicate with prospects. But I think, I think people haven't figured that out yet. You know, they haven't quite figured out how to, to communicate with the customers where they're at necessarily, and they're still picking up the phone. Why, why do you think that is that a company would be challenged with succeeding if they bought an omni-channel platform? Um, you know, for people who are listening to this, either have it and realize, oh, shoot, that's me, or uh, are thinking about getting it and they're holding back because they're worried they're not going to succeed. Why do you think companies aren't maximizing it? Uh, I mean, my, my speculation is that we get stuck in the normal routine of what we always do. And even though that routine is, is not producing the same as it used to, we still are stuck in it because that's just what we know. So it's calls, 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 contact rate, contact, contact rate, follow up and all this sort of stuff. And it's not um, how do I implement this you know, piece? And it's different. It's not a phone. It's not a thing that's automated like although it's just ringing like you know, you know we just we can just sit there and it's just going to ring and connect ring connect reconnect. i don't really have to do anything I, I disposition the lead blah 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 now i have you know texting happening it's like how do i implement that into my organization do i silo off a team that does it um that how do i you know mess do messenger uh am i even on facebook or whatsapp am i utilizing these things it's just a it, it i think it expands you know, beyond what people are sometimes comfortable with in their in their normal routine. So, so I, but they know they have to do it. They know, like, okay, we already know text messaging is likely one of the best you know ways to communicate with a prospect on their time and 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 how they want to. Um, but you know, implementing, I think, is probably tough. What do you think? Because you're going into the call centers. Is that sort of the? Are they? Are or are prospects just not there yet either? Uh, I well. I think the prospects are definitely there. I think they want to be there and they want to chat with uh, with a sales organization and a yeah. sales team in the ways they want to contact with them, ultimately leaving, leading to voice, right? So at some point, it's yeah. got to be a phone call if it's a considered purchase because they need help. They're scared. They're confused. They're worried about making a change. They don't know what's the best option. And so they still want some help from somebody over the phone, how they start that or how they get there, that's, you know, it's going to be up to them. And it's not even generational. It's just based on what people are comfortable with. Um, I think what you said is is one part of it, which is my experience, where companies, they, they know what works for them. They bought this software. They know they should. It's in the should category. I know we yeah. should do text. I know we should do chat. I know we should do Facebook Messenger. I know we should do email. But this works enough, and we're doing well enough. And um, you know, when in doubt, we'll just buy more data or fire our lead provider and buy different data because it must be the data why our contact rates are bad, um, or switch dialers because maybe it's the dialer that's bad um, instead of like. And sometimes it's resources. Like okay, so you want to do this SMS platform. 
okay, who's gonna, who am I gonna take out of here and put over there? And they're gonna be the expert running that. And do they know what they're doing? And now I'm losing them over here. And can I afford that from a, a resource standpoint and from a, a investment standpoint? I think yeah. the other part, and you know, omni-channel uh, providers might not like this part, but I think there's a lot of really slick B2B SaaS salespeople. I think there's a lot of people who make it sound really good and talk people into buying these platforms that they don't ever use, like CRMs. <laughs> How many companies do we both know, and anyone listening to this knows this as well, where you're like, okay, you know what's gonna help is I need a new CRM, that's what's gonna make everything better or improve my sales, and then you don't even use 10% of this thing, uh, and then it doesn't help and no one likes it, and then it actually makes things worse. And I think there's a lot of SaaS salespeople who talk to companies and they tell them how great an omni-channel solution is, which I think is important. I don't, I'm not saying they're deceiving anyone. It's just like, this is great. You need this. But then there's the follow-up, right? There's the implementation, there's the training, the coaching, you know, the supporting them. It's like, okay, here's a member for a membership for the gym. Like you've never worked out in your life, but I'm going to sell you on a gym yeah. membership. Uh, and I don't do training. So good luck. Hopefully, you show up. Hopefully <laughs> there's you some weights we all over know there. What happens. Yeah, yeah. There's some weights there's over some there. Weights Go and over pick there. them up. <laughs> yeah, there's a YouTube video if you want to watch that to see how to get in shape and um, and good luck. And we literally all know the end of that story because a lot of people uh, have gym memberships they don't use or and might even be paying for. And I think that's what happens with the Omni channel. And there's yeah. solutions for that, right? Is is finding some help. Yeah, that's a really good point. I mean, those some of those companies probably should those CRM companies or whatever you know contact uh, center platforms should probably have like a three month implementation. Uh, thing where they go in there and really go, here's how, how you know, here's how to structure your organization now around these tools, yeah. you know, and and not just the tech piece. Right?